Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Baltimore Guys on our movie review episode. And on this episode, we discuss Mission Impossible Fallout with the great and only Scientologist himself, Tom Cruise. Joining me, as always, is my good friend, Paul Kim. Paul, what's going on, man? Nothing much, man. Thanks for having me again. Always, man. Always, always yep. a pleasure to have you on. So uh, tell me, man, what, what did you think of uh, the latest installment? Of Mission Impossible, I thought it was very well made. I was thoroughly entertained. There was a good story, emphasis on a good story. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was just a really good movie, man. Like, like there was obviously the stunts are the the are the things in the movie that really stand out because the way I realized with each Mission Impossible, the shots are longer with the action scenes mm -hmm. were to really clarify that Tom Cruise is really doing the stunt, which I really like. Cause you know, a lot of action movies, they just do a lot of cutaways, but with Tom is like, no, we're just going to keep this long take to show how crazy I am. <laughs> yeah. That motorcycle chase scene. Oh my was, God. I was just that like, was a good, that was a good minute. And, it was uh, long, man. Was long. And I, I was like, I saw my sister and me, there's so many times where I looked like, she was like sitting to my left and I was like looking at her I was like he's so crazy like and we're just like it's it's hard for a movie or movie star to these days to really have that impact on me and a lot of audiences because you know audiences now these days is really hard to entertain and I feel like everyone I've talked to who's seen this movie they say this is the best Mission Impossible it's crazy he's doing those stunts and he's 56 yes and the fact that some of these stunts um, we'll talk about I guess more about the actual stunts, but most of these stunts he actually had to like train for like over a year or even two years to even get it on film. So to me, like the level he takes to to master his craft is just you know have mad respect him, mad respect for him for doing that. So it's that Scientology, I think. Uh... Maybe that's something I need to look at. I into. mean, other than this, you know what? If he wants to believe Scientology, that's fine. You know, that's his own personal belief. But as a movie star, I think he's doing his, he's doing what he's supposed to do. And then it's to entertain us. And he never fails at that. So he doesn't. Um, I love the movie. Uh, it was very entertaining. Uh, it was a good story. There are still aspects, aspects of it that was just like, all right, whatever. Like the whole, I guess at the ending, they tried to bring the whole emotional. Yeah, he it. Don't, I kind of yeah. didn't really give a shit. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, oh, it's your <laughs> former wife. Oh, well, yeah, right, whatever. And, yeah, like the wife part, I was like, why do they keep bringing her back? Like, to me, she's like the actually, she's the one character out of all the movies in the Mission Impossible. Where I'm like, why does she keep coming back? Like, she's not there. Like, <laughs> like you said, like I didn't care yeah, whether she died or not. Like, I mean, no offense to you, but yeah. I just, I just. Julia, I just didn't give a damn. No, I just didn't give a damn. Michelle Monaghan, I think that's her name. The actress. Yep. You're beautiful, but your character in the movies are is just so worthless. I'm sorry. So, what do you think about? Uh, well, let's go through. So, Ethan Hunt, mm -hmm. you know, he's back with the IMF team, and he joins forces with a CIA assassination uh, to prevent a disaster of epic proportions. And of mm -hmm. course, the epic proportions. I think I think it's been the same trend for the past three movies. Is nuclear? It was plutonium in Plut this one. Well, yeah. Okay, whatever. At the same yeah. point, you're talking about a nuclear yeah, bomb. Yeah. yeah, it's a bomb. Well, I think the story was like plutonium, and they're like trying to like cut off water supply or whatever to like basically th like a third of the world or something. Right, man. The places they were going to attack were um, it's basically Asia. Right, the Vatican, uh -huh. Jerusalem, Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, all places Scientologists hate. Just saying. <laughs> so, I don't. I'm not saying this is a foreshadowing. I'm just saying it's quite the coincidence. Just, quite the possibility. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. You know, don't come at me, guys. I'm just, you know, the outside looking in. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know these things. But yeah, so you know, uh, doesn't there the whole. Uh, opening scene with him uh having his these nightmares or these flashbacks i didn't think they did anything no that's the thing like i when exact when that first scene happened i was like 
when you heard the voice of the whatever the pastor or minister, you know who it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I just yeah, I didn't. It didn't. I can see what they're trying to do, like like full loop back at you know, the beginning of the movie and ending the movie, like oh my god, you know my wife's here, you know what a coincidence, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Um, what a twist. Yeah, but again, like I just she didn't. I she came in. Her character came in Mission Impossible Three, I believe, right? I think so. Yeah. And I don't know if she came back ever since. I don't remember. I don't know if her character ever came back, but it's not enough for me to be like, oh my God, her life's in danger. All I cared about was like, is Ethan Hunt going to die? You know? Or yeah. whatever. I didn't care about her character. I, didn't, I wasn't really invested in her because she was barely in the movie. And I don't think they... They need... If they wanted us to be invested in her character, she, need, she needed to be in... More than one Mission Impossible movie, not just cameos either. Like cameos are not enough. And I know, like here and there, like they brought up her character, like you know how much she cared about her. That you know he loved her so much that you know being with her puts her in more danger. Blah blah blah. But just it was still wasn't enough for me as a moviegoer and a filmmaker to be convinced that I should be you give know, a damn, give a damn exactly, or give a fuck. Um, but, yeah. What did you think about? So there, he's got his team back. Yeah. Uh, Simon Pegg plays mm-hmm. Benji. Ving Rhames plays Luther. Man, Ving Rhames. I mean, nothing against you, buddy, but goddamn, time he's old, old, getting fat. I mean, but that's that's he's like comes just, to age, man. He's just, I mean, and the crazy part is he's only three years older than Tom Cruise. <laughs> but man, Tom Cruise knows how to take care of himself. I mean, it's a Scientology, but um. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, damn, man, Vig, <laughs> he just looks so old. I know, like, time is the not part, the on part his they side. had him running and shit, I was like, oh, man, don't do that to that man. His knees are probably going to pop know. at any second. Like, Come on. <laughs> but Come on. I like um, new edition Henry Cavill. Oh, yeah, 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 let's talk about him. I think he's. I think he was great. Um, spoilers, obviously. Oh, yeah, um, spoilers. I kind of called that. it that he was the, um, what was... Uh, there was that code name for that um, member where the story was they were trying to meet up with the um, one of the dealers. Oh, I forget uh, the agent name. something. Yeah, it was a code name. But he's part of the apostles. Yeah, apostles exactly. Like he's like basically the head of the apostles or whatever. I kind of called that. I mean, I don't know from the trailers too. Kind of gave it away a little bit, in my opinion. Like when he's sh- in the trailers, when you see Henry Cavill shooting at Tom Cruise, I'm like, yeah, he's a bad guy. That's obvious. I mean, that w- they didn't really hide that very well. Um, but I thought Henry Cavill was great. Like even like the physical presence of his character, especially in that fight scene in in the bathroom. Yeah, that was probably an, an, that was actually an awesome fight scene, man. It was. Yeah, and uh. I saw the behind the scenes for that, mm-hmm. and all those lights in there are LEDs. Really? So they're nothing fancy. Yeah. So it's just literally almost like just natural almost lighting. Yeah. But pretty badass. Yeah, and then like going back to his character, I think I was afraid that he was gonna because when Henry Cavill does an accent, American accent is just a typical Superman, you know, accent. Uh, what you know, would he expect? You know, what we expected. So I was like, oh, is he gonna? Not saying he was a he's a bad actor, but I think like watching like Man of Steel and then Batman versus Superman, I think at first I was like, there's some scenes where when I watch those movies that he's not good in. I'm just like, ugh, I'm cringe like lines. But I think watching this movie it kind of showed that he's an actual good actor because I think it all depends on the director too, how a director directs an actor, and obviously how good the script is. So when I saw this movie, I was kind of surprised, like, with his acting abilities, you know, it was like, he added, I guess he added more, or I saw more of him, his acting skills mm-hmm. in this movie, and um, obviously his fight, like, his physical aspect, not just him being Superman, but actually just like a man-to-man, you know, hand-to-hand combat, like, he's good at that too, so, I don't know, I was genuinely impressed with him, and I was actually talking with somebody the other day how, when I saw that movie, well, how we both saw that movie that, you know, there are like rumors they're looking for a new James Bond. And we're like, hey, maybe he could be the next James Bond. You know, he has that look, you know. Idris Elba has that look, too. You know, but no, it's funny. We Diversity. Had the same, no, like we had the argument where like, either 
I personally want Idris Elba just because let's. I will. I would honestly have off topic. I would like to have a non-white James Bond for once, but you know that's gonna piss off a lot of people. I want a black James Bond banging all the white bitches. <laughs> that's what I want. But Idris Elba, come on, man! I think everyone, whether you're white or black, everybody loves. Every woman will think he's pretty sexy. Like, man, the, the guy's good looking. British accent, come on. Like, yeah, I think uh, man has everything. I think that'd be a good marriage. I think. Anyways, so but, back to Henry Cavill, yeah. though. You're telling me, Warner Brothers, you guys couldn't go to your makeup department and make a mustache? That mustache? Is that... You mean Paramount? No, Paramount. Paramount. Okay, Paramount. Paramount said no to Warner Brothers when they said that, hey, if you... We can add on a mustache, like CGI, and they said that's easier than taking it off. And they said they will pay the budget. Warner Brothers said they will pay the budget for that CGI to paramount they were literally on their knees saying we will you don't you guys don't have to spend a cent but paramount said no because in a contract specifically it said not to shave his mustache that's the dumbest contract I've but ever but you think of. about this too like i can get it from paramount's point of view to warner bros saying like well maybe you guys should have been more specific about what movie you were going to make with justice league you know, like they literally shot half the movie all over again with Joss Whedon with Justice League. So in the end, Paramount was like, that's not a problem. That's your problem that you guys didn't know what kind of movie you wanted to make. So in any, if any case, that's Warner Brothers fault, too. They made it. They should have just let Z- Zack Snyder just make his movie and just be done with it. Hashtag release the Snyder cut. Yes. Because I've seen these that. deleted scenes. I don't know if you've seen these deleted yeah, scenes. Yeah, he's posting stuff up. And, and I'm like, like these why are, didn't you just are so good. release that? Yeah, these are so good. Just stylistically, they look better. I'm sorry, this is off topic. But just, anyways, but that whole whole ordeal with, you know, Paramount not letting Henry Cavill shave his mustache. I mean, at first I was like, oh, that's a petty move. But at the same time, I understand. It's like, we're making our movie, you know. You guys did a Warner Brothers last minute, wanted to schedule these reshoots out of nowhere while we're shooting our movie. It's like, that's not a problem. So... <sighs> Teaches, you know, so I mean, it sucks, stupid. but so Justice stupid. League was just a horror movie. That should be actually, we should do a review on that movie. Just how bad it I was. I don't want to, I want to cry anymore. <laughs> All right, anyway, no. going back, I don't want to relive that past. That was just, <sighs> yeah, it happened, it is what it is. But anyway, so Henry Cavill character is good. We had Vanessa Kirby. Is she going out with Tom Cruise now? No, no, no she. Uh, she had a baby recently. Um, I don't know Not her husband my baby. is, but um, I like her character a lot. I think she's very attractive. She's attractive in a different way. I'll say that. Yeah, she. Uh, I think she played a good part yeah. in, in the movie. Yeah. Um, I feel like they should have... Because they were playing the whole like love story with her and Tom Cruise's character. Did you think that was a love story? <sighs> Kind, I mean, not a love short. story, that but not a love story, not a love story like but a you know, like some sort of, story. yeah, yeah, but like an attraction though, like because now there was a, there's a love triangle in a way with her and then Ethan's wife, and I'm like, oh, like I'm not feeling that. No, 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 no. we were talking about the wrong, different person. What are you talking about? Vanessa Kirby is the uh, is the uh, the dealer, the dealer. Oh, chick. oh yeah, yeah oh, I think she's attractive, oh, for sure, yeah, the dealer chick, but I think she was just. I think she was underplayed. Yeah. I would have um, liked to see more of her character. I like the way she like portrayed that character. Like she didn't overdo it like a how most female how just villains in general are overplayed or overacted. Um she's good eye candy. I mean I don't know. She was like to me like reminded me of like a Bond girl almost in a way. Um but don't you misogynize these women, man. I know, but again. I like no, her character but, for what what she did. So but Re- Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, now we're talking about. Now her we're talking about yes. her. And yes, I guess they're trying to the the whole love story rekindle and that. I feel like they should have focused on that more and not introduced the whole Ethan's wife into that. Yeah, then, that, that then it's like, so yeah, like who do we care about? Weird. Yeah, who do we care about? Yeah, they had like a little girl talk, like, mm-hmm. oh, Ethan, isn't he great? Oh yeah, he's just well. Oh, oh. Like, and then the it's like, and also we're talking about like how their lives are at stake like if we took out ethan's wife 
right mm-hmm. out of the story at the end i feel like the threat of rebecca's character would have been greater because like oh my gosh she's there while ethan's trying to get the other whatever was it the detonator or whatever mm-hmm. or the key like that would add more suspense but then when you add an other character that we barely who's barely in any of the mission impossible movies like i don't know it just didn't add the threat threat level so and plus two with her joining them Ethan's wife? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, Elsa uh-huh. joining them at the end. It's mm-hmm. kind of just like that tension was over with. Like that whole scene with don't make me go through you. Oh, I'm yeah, thinking yeah, like yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. get carried yeah. on yeah. till the end. And yeah. then that would that would be their whole coming of whatever. Like she probably goes to save him mm-hmm. or, you know, it, it, it kind of just seemed like, hey, I'm on. I'm trying to do this thing and you're trying to do this and our paths are going to collide and mm-hmm. we're going to have to duke this out yeah i guess but then it just kind of was like all right that's it all right i'm joining you guys we're back together all right what what, what are we doing that kind of reminds me of how like in batman versus superman how all of a sudden they're kicking each other's ass and all of a sudden like oh we're friends right right yeah. <laughs> i saw that movie yesterday from beginning to end the director's cut the whole I'll three hours your mom and then I was just like, that's, if anything, out of the whole movie, that's still the worst scene ever. That, that kind of, that's one scene ruins the whole movie. And that kind of in Mission Impossible, that's the same aspect. Like, oh my God, like this whole thing that we used to be partners, but now like I have to work against you. Like, and all of a sudden, like we're friends again. Like that wasn't built up right. But um, yeah, I, yeah. Wish, I wish they would have just made that longer. Just kind of. Exactly. Maybe until attention. like the very, very end. Where, right. Like and, she's about to be blown up. Into and pieces. then that would. I think that would be cooler for Ethan Hunt's character because as Ving Rhames said in that story with the whole, oh, whoever he cares about ever gets in danger and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that would be cool to be now he's trying to complete this mission, but then the person he cares about is in his way. Mm -hmm. So what is he willing to do to complete that mission? Exactly. Exactly all the way through and mm-hmm. um I, I i guess that whole dynamic of him caring for one person so much that it's a good thing mm-hmm. uh, I, I mean I, I guess it's okay it seemed kind of cheesy to me i think that's where like the script kind of was weak in my opinion yeah i um, just uh, i mean what do you think i guess they try to bring him human but whatever. what do you think about the villain oh it's From solomon the harris movie. yeah I like his presence, mm-hmm. but again, I don't think he did. They did. They didn't utilize him. You know? Yeah, utilize yeah. him enough. I feel like in the last movie, obviously, they utilized him a lot. But I feel like when you take a villain from the last movie and then make him the villain again in the next movie, like you have to like add something more to that character. If that makes sense, because it was like a two-year period technically since the last movie. Right. But then you're like. I just feel like they didn't build enough on that character other than him having this, obviously, this end-of-the-world scenario. Um, and then, obviously, Henry Cavill working for him. I guess that's, like, a the, the plot twist, but... I don't know. Like, it just... They didn't add on to that character, you know, other than he has the apostles and all that. But as, as the actual character, I feel like they didn't add on to him. He was just the same character from the last movie. Right. And so, nothing else. And I feel like, if anything, he wasn't the villain. I feel like Henry Cavill was the main villain, per se, you know, in this movie. Which I think they were, what they were, I think that's what they were trying to do. And, uh, well, I, I... If they were going to go that route, mm-hmm. they should have just stuck with him the whole time. Instead of occasionally bringing back yeah. the Solomon Lane mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. Like okay, well, this guy's the head guy because then I was, because mo- then it took away from Henry, Henry Cavill and that transition of him being, uh, that, the, like the big reveal, the that big he, reveal yeah, yeah, bad yeah. guy, yeah. Um. So I, I mean, I mean, it was still it was, it was okay. I mean, I, I was okay with it. I just would would have wished, like I said, they would have kept uh, if they're gonna make that cha- transition like that, keep it with Henry Cavill then the whole time. Yep, is yep. the main guy. Yep. Yep. Or, you know, or even in, at that part, maybe he, well, he would have killed uh, Benji, but, uh, you know, 
have something where he kills off the dude. And he's like, well, I'm doing this my own way. Yeah. Kind of deal. Yeah. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it was yeah. good. It yeah. was good. I, I, I like... I like his character. Yeah. I do like his character. Um, dude. Tom Cruise is short. I think he's my height. He said he's 5'7". He's time- lying. He's lying. Because when he was... That scene where they were talking to the brother and sister at the, um, the big mansion or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Henry Cavill was next to him at one point and then slightly behind him. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, Tom, you're short as hell. Like, what the? F-? Did you realize too? Also, and he does this with every movie. It's not just Mission Impossible. Every movie he's been in, there's always one shot. Let's say, if, especially if it's with a woman, there's one shot, like a like a wide angle shot of them standing next to next to each other. She never wears heels. First of all, women never heel, <laughs> wear heels in front of him. He always wears long pants and obviously lifts in his shoes. But then after that, they cut to an extreme, like almost like a medium close-up shot, and never goes back to the wide shot again. Because <laughs> let's be honest, he's probably standing on like an apple box, probably. Or whatever, probably. <laughs> um, they pro- actors probably signed a contract saying you're not no pictures allowed on set because that's what you're gonna fucking see. Actors should not reveal that he stands on the apple Do box. Do not lifts. reveal his true height. I really don't think he's five seven because I'm five three, and when I wear shoes with big heels and I put lifts. Uh, I'll be honest. Confession: I, I wear lifts inside of my shoes. You shouldn't have said anything. I know. I wasn't. But I'm being. It. I'm being honest. Well, how kind of you. Even that, I'll, the tallest I can get is probably like five six, and I'm still considered short. So when he says he's five seven, natural height? No, I don't he's, believe that. There is a shot. Um, I'm not criticizing his height because I'm short. I'm a short dude. I don't want to do that. But I will. He's fucking short. And goes protocol. Um. There is a photo of him with Sarah Paulson. I believe no, is that her name? No, not Sarah Paulson. Sorry. Um, uh, Ghost Protocol. Whatever. I, I know her name. Uh, I'll look through the uh, yeah. list of hoes for you. Oh, are you talking about um, uh, Paula Patton? Yes, Paula Patton. Very beautiful woman. Paula Patton is five seven. So she's five seven, right? There is a photo of her, and in the movie, there's a party scene, right? Mm-hmm. She's, in, I think, I believe she's in a green dress. There's a photo of her with no heels, obviously, it's flats, right? Tom Cruise is standing right next to her, head to head, right? He's in a suit and dress shoes, but they're head to head. And if you look at his shoes, obviously, there's like, there's lifts, it's lifts, obviously. So if she's 5'7, naturally, with no heels, He's not 5'7", naturally. He's shorter than that. Mm-hmm. He's probably my height. He's probably like 5'3", five, 5'4", five, or something. Yeah, and then there were scenes where he was with um, uh, Alec Baldwin. Mm-hmm. Alec Baldwin, I heard, is a very tall dude. I heard he's like 6'3", or something. He's 6'4". Like, like, yeah, I heard he's really tall. So Alec Baldwin is... God damn it. I still respect Tom Cruise. We're not we're not criticizing. He, height has nothing to do with his talent, but he's still a midget. But um, yeah. So let's um, be honest. Go, <laughs> he he's uh, there are scenes where it didn't seem the like the um the airport scene uh-huh. where they were at the uh the the tarmac or whatever mm-hmm. there, and he's talking to him. I'm like, yo, you guys are not that close in height. Like, oh yeah, they're almost like looking eye to eye, right? Yeah, I was like, you're not no. that close tonight. Like, no, you should. Again, every scene that he's, every scene Tom is in with someone that's really freakishly taller than he is, is never a full wide shot. It's always like a medium close up shot. That's it. Like every movie, he's even like the movie I saw uh, Jack Reacher the other day. Again, oh, a great movie. So Alec Baldwin apparently six feet. Either way, six feet. Even with lifts, Tom, you're still not going to reach him eye to eye level. So it's like... Which one of the Baldwin brothers is tall? Oh, William Baldwin. He's 6'2". Yeah. But... Whatever it is. Again, he... watch... Everyone watch Tom, movies, Tom Cruise movie again. Really watch how there's not a lot of scenes with actors that are taller than him that have wide shots. You don't play that. 
They don't play. Everything's close up. Bust their kneecaps. Or You're not like, like you me. said, if someone's taller than him, they're, they're all the way in the background and he's in the foreground. That's a little trick too Hollywood uses. Yeah, he. <laughs> though there's some scenes where you just can't, you can't hide it. You this is really obvious. Him. It's like, come on, dude. Like, we know. But I think the reason why people don't really care how tall he is is because he's just a good, he's a good actor. You know, he's a good action star. Like, generally nice guy. Like, other than the Scientology part, um, <laughs> I think people just kind of excuse that. You know, with his height is, but. Hey, he's uh. He's Tom Cruise is the epitome of Hollywood. Like his name is Hollywood. Like there's, you can't. He's worked for. He worked. He worked for that. Yeah, honestly. yeah. So, I, I like him. He's <clears> like. Uh, I just don't. I just think he just should be more honest with his height. But I think at this point with the internet and with photos, I mean, let's be real. Like we know he's not that tall. <laughs> and from one short guy to another, I know the tricks too. The illusion of looking tall. So it's all that. It's all. It's all. It's all in the shoes, man. It's all in the shoes. It's all in the shoes and the lifts. So uh, what? Let's talk about the stunts, because uh, the big thing with all the Mission Impossible movies, mm-hmm. stunts. Yes. Practical stunts. Yep. Uh, you know they've gotten more practical after each movie. Right. Like the, f- I think the first three movies were kind of, you know, there's a lot of CGI involved. Especially the first movie, there was a lot of CGI involved. Um, especially in the first movie with the train scene in the mm-hmm. subway. Uh, the second one, when John Moo directed it, um, there was some CGI, but I feel like it was more practical too because John Woo is a more practical type of director. If you watch his old movies, like his Chinese like action movies, they're mm-hmm. very like, there's no CGI in his movies. Mm-hmm. The third one with J.J. Abrams was definitely, there was a lot of CGI. Um, just cause, but, um, and Lens Flair. Lens Flair, definitely. Um, four was gross... Four was when Christopher McQuarrie started, I think, directing the Mission Impossible movies with Tom. Um, and then after that, he did every Mission Impossible after that, and every stunt after that has become more practical. Obviously, if you watch this one, um, there are some scenes where, you know, they added the CGI. Yeah, like when you crash the uh, motorcycle from the car. Yeah. There's a, a couple frames you can obviously see that's just... Uh, when he... Jumped out of the plane. The lightning obviously was added. Oh yeah, you yeah, saw yeah, the behind yeah. the scene. There was no lightning. Yeah, right, right. Um, I believe too the motorcycle chase scene. They added some cars into. It. There's no way he can. Oh yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, but and but most of the time in the obviously helicopter scene, there are some scenes that are CGI. But um, and plus they they take stuff out like when he fell on the roof on the with the wires. Well, that too, but the helicopter, when mm-hmm. he was climbing the thing, mm-hmm. and he fell down. Yeah, he had a wire. Yeah, he had a wire. Yeah, he had I mean, to, but that was pretty but cool the how they he still it. did it, though. Yeah. He still, still did crazy. it, though. Right. It's so crazy. Because let's say that wire snapped. He'd been dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... Um, and let's not forget, too, he broke his ankle on that scene where he jumped yep. across the thing. And was it when uh, when he gets up and starts limping... Is is his ankle broken? Yep. Okay. I right, so I left that in. Okay. I saw the interview when he uh, it was Graham Norton's show, and he was saying like how they kept that scene, the actual scene when he broke his ankle. But if you um in that movie, but the one thing that I guess they uh, if you watch the movie, like compared to the raw footage and the actual scene they kept in the movie, like when you actually saw his break, like you could literally see his ankle snap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they kind of. Fixed that in post because when I saw the movie, I was actually watching that scene. Yeah, that's specifically. the part I was waiting for. I was yeah, like, when you jumping? But then I was like, oh, they they took out the snapping part. Okay, but the limping part was actually it was for real that he actually broke his ankle. But I, I applaud Tom Cruise for keep going because you know in Hollywood the rule is you keep going, going until you say cut. cut. And he's such a professional that he knows like he knew once he broke his ankle he can't do that scene again, so he kept going, which was I think. That shows how a true a professional he is. Well, there's a uh, there's no there's a bunch of actors that have done that. Leonardo DiCaprio and oh, Django yeah. when he cut his hand. Scene. Yeah, um, Viggo Mortensen in Lord of the Rings. We'll see. He uh, in the Two Towers, I think it is. He kicked the helmet. Mm-hmm. I think he must have kicked it like thirty. Oh no, not thirty. Like thirteen times or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're legit metal helmets. Mm-hmm. And I think by like the fourth one or eighth one or whatever he broke like his toe then like really? he broke yeah so the part where he kicks it and he screams is actually a in the real movie scream. 
Yeah. And it's in the movie. Yeah, it's in the movie. Yeah. So, and they, they had no idea. He didn't say anything until they were like, okay, you give the shot. By the way, I just broke my foot. And they're like, wait, what? But, did what? Yeah. But I think um, the stunts in this movie were still crazy. But I think to me, his craziest stunt was in Rogue Nation. Where in the beginning of that movie, where he was f- hanging off of an airplane, yeah. Because think about it, like the only if you watch behind the scenes, the only thing that held him up was a wire. Yeah, and he had fuel f- literally flying in his face, so he had to wear special contact lenses for fuel not to get in his eyes. Then you think the plane's taking off full speed, right? Anything in that kind That's of a speed, a lot of G's, a lot of G's. And you think about how if anything flew in his face at that speed, a rock. Or even a bird, he would have been dead. So, like, and he did that scene eight times, I heard, to get that shot. From when he took off until he landed was he kept going with that scene. And it was freezing cold. So, I mean, there's a lot of stunts in this movie when he jumped out of the airplane. When I saw it behind the scene where that, again, how they shot it was before he jumped out of the airplane, it was one long take of him, a close-up. And then, obviously, when he flew out of the plane to make sure that he actually did it. Um, but I don't know. Like even the helicopter scene was impressive, but I think what took me out of that a little bit was when they start adding a lot of the CGI parts. And I was like, yeah. I'm I mean, not. I can't. I mean, look, you can't. You can't be perfect with it. I know. I, mean, I know. You just can't be. But. I know. But I applaud him for actually flying a helicopter by himself and doing a 360, whatever. I forgot what trick that was he did when he was flying and he like went down 360 like mm-hmm. like he was spinning like her like if you do that trick wrong you could die and he did that which was very impressive but Tom Cruise don't give a damn yeah Scientology got my back yeah that's what he said but they were like, like especially I think for me the, I think the one stunt that impressed me the most honestly was it wasn't the plane scene it wasn't the helicopter it was when he was riding his motorcycle yeah cause Cause there was some. I was. He was going so fast, and the camera did not cut. Do you think that they were going f- fast, or do you think they were going at a good constant speed? So let's say they were going forty five, fifty mm-hmm. miles an hour. Yeah, and they probably sped it up the footage like ten percent, if that. Do you think that's possible? That could be possible, but it, the fact sometimes that he's not. They do. That. Yeah, yeah, but the fact that he did it with no helmet. Oh yeah. Period was just dangerous. I mean. And it's not the first time he did it. And I believe it was Rogue Nation too. He did a motorcycle scene with no helmet, mm-hmm. and he was actually doing these like really crazy turns. So, but I don't know. I felt feel like that scene was impressive. Um, but I really liked that fight scene in the bathroom because I believe there was no music in that fight scene. It was just no. straight up. Well, oh, oh, I think you heard the music from the uh, from the background from the club. But yeah. there was no like an actual That's not music. Even a club, it was yeah. a freaking stadium. Yeah, or whatever it was. Yeah, but. That fight scene was, I just, I loved how brutal, brutal it was. Um, but, yeah, I just, yeah, I think the stunts in the movie was, was you know, sort of death-defying, but n- not the best ones, in my opinion. Um, I, they, I think this is where I would say the hype was too much, where he kept saying, like, like, before he revealed, like, because you know, every movie he, the stunts gets crazier. Mm-hmm. Um, before he even revealed, before any footage was revealed, like, what stunt he was working on, he kept saying, like, yeah, I worked on this stunt for two years. And it was like, what the fuck is he doing? You know, training for two years. And it was like, it's just a helicopter sequence. I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess that's good, you know. Oh, well, he needs to. I know he needs he to. Yeah. Died, and he's old. Yeah. He's 57. Yeah. yeah. But, um, for six, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I can't say anything because I've never flew a helicopter. You got so, damn right. You I know. Haven't. But I still think if you rank out of all his stunts is when he hangs off the airplane in Rogue Nation. I stand by that. But still in this stunts, still in this movie, I always, like I said, when I was watching the movie, I just kept saying, he's crazy, dude. In a good way, too. He's like, you're crazy as fuck. Like, <laughs> he did the, um, the uh, parachuting skydiving with uh, James Gordon. Mm-hmm. I heard James Corden like got hurt from what I heard. I think when he landed. I yeah, he yeah. did like a goddamn split. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. But um no man, he uh just seeing him like when he like jumped out the plane, he's just like, Oh yay and then when he lands and stuff, 
I mean, that's just it's just second nature to him now. Yeah. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty but cool. But don't you do you believe? Because I feel like he's like he sets the standard so high. Even the actors say like they do their own stunts because he sets the standard so high. I'm wondering if he sets the he sets the standard so high in Hollywood where like, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think. I mean, I guess that's good that he motivates actors mm -hmm. and actresses to do their own stunts. Yeah. But I still think they're kind of like, well, that's that's Tom Cruise's yeah. deal. That he, yeah. he he can have that. Yeah. Um, if there's a chance for me not to get my ankle broken, I'm gonna take it. Yeah. So I think, yes, he does motivate more people to do their own shit. But I still think at the end of the day. That's that's what he's going to be remembered for. That's what yeah. Hollywood's going to know him yeah. for. Tom Cruise is the guy who does his own stunts and and uh, you know that's why. That's I why heard um, Henry that. Cavill was trying to do that stunt when they flew off the airplane. Like and he begged and begged. I heard, but then literally Tom Cruise was like, "I don't want you to die." <laughs> that's basically what he said. <laughs> So leave it to the professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I mean, I've heard like, they're like saying like people are saying like Tom Cruise like is better than most stuntmen at this point. Like he he's like basically a stuntman himself. Which oh, he is. I mean, he's got a a lot of uh. He's got the credentials for it. Yeah. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff. So what are yeah. you gonna say to the guy? Now, what do you think he has to do to top himself for the next movie? And I'm not talking about Mission Impossible because you know he's gonna do a Top Gun too. Yeah, dude. What's up with these movies coming out decades after the yeah. freaking? <sighs> like, what? What do you think he has to do, like stunt wise? Because to me, he's a good actor. I that I'll never take away from him. Like, he's a very good actor. No matter what movie he does, whether the movie is really horrible, like The Mummy, for instance. <laughs> Tom Cruise in that movie was not bad. He did what he had to do. But I'm saying, like, stunt wise. What do you think he has to do to like really top it all? Like, I honestly, because I mean, I, he's done everything at this point. Yeah, honestly, I don't. Unless he's gonna go deep sea diving in a Mariner trench with no scuba gear and <laughs> or space or 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 does that, but yeah, they're not gonna allow him up there. So I think if he does some un, uh, crazy underwater stuff where he's tries to break into a a submarine mm -hmm. that's a bunch of about to launch nuclear warheads yeah. with no scuba gear. And <laughs> I mean, because he held his breath for six minutes. That's one stunt in Rogue Nation too. So it's like, I don't know. Like it's that's hard, dude. Like the power of Scientology, man. Well, what about well, what about this, man? Like you know, mission first, first Mission Impossible is mm -hmm. a train sequence, right? Mm -hmm. But when you watch the movie, obviously it's CGI. What if he does that in real life instead? Uh, well, how, how many projects does he have lined up? I know Top Gun 2 is his next one. Um, I, I think they have a script already. I think now they're just trying to like finalize everything from what I know. But Look, there's two things that are... Uh, well, there's one thing that's definitely undefeated, and that's Father Time. And it's... Great as he's been at his age, mm -hmm. at some point, you know, I think he's gonna has to stop. Well, he has to stop, but he's already set the bar. Yeah. So I mean, I guess this whole expectation, like, what's he gonna do next? I think that's unrealistic. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to put that pressure on he, him. Yeah, I think he knows that he's already topped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I mean, that whole motorcycle chase scene alone. Yes. Like, I was just like, dude, he's going to crash at some point. Like, yeah. When is it happening? Yeah. Even though I saw it in the trailer, so I kind of already guessed. Mm -hmm. Just that whole time when they're just, like, going and going and doing. I'm just like, geez, man. Like, And then uh, I think, uh, what's her name? Elsa. That I Well, I guess that was a stunt person. I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm sure that was her. But that part where she was just, just flying down that freaking. Um, um, that little hallway, hallway thing. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just. I mean, obviously they closed the set and yeah, and they closed it off. But just like, ugh, ugh, it's like, ugh, just. You know what? You know what scene you have to see. Um, you seen Jack Reacher, right? The first one. Yeah. I f yes, but I forget about it. I know it's it's directed by the same guy yeah, too, Christian right? Yeah, Christian McCoy. Yeah. Yeah, but I I forget. Nah. 
if you're gonna watch anything from that movie, watch the car chase sequence he does in that movie. Um, I watched it behind the scenes. Every scene in that movie, he's he does everything, all the stunts, like all the crashes, he does. And the way they shot that movie too is the same thing as um, Mission Impossible, where they make sure to let the audience know like this is Tom doing it. There's no stunt double doing this. Um, and and again, a movie where there's no music playing. Like the only music, quote unquote, that you hear is like the engine that's coming from the muscle car in that movie, mm-hmm. and then the crash, whatever sounds. But other than that, like again, another instance where he shows how cr- not crazy, but just how dedicated Tom is as a action star and as an actor. You know, so do you think? Because uh, with studio stuff, do you think he gets away with as far as timing and because he broke his ankle? I'm not sure where they were as far as shooting. I think they were. All, I think they were pretty much almost finished with everything. Okay. Yeah. So, but I have from an interview I heard that he broke when he broke his ankle. I think it was two weeks or three weeks after he broke his ankle, they kept filming, and he wasn't fully healed. And there's scenes that he's running, with not a fully healed ankle. Yeah. Let's let's talk. So, well, let me ask this first. Yeah. So, you think he gets leeway as far as doing these stunts? Well, time to make the movie. No, like I know he says in some interviews where like he like instance when he broke his ankle. Usually some studios were like okay we have to delay, it. but for him he was like no we have a deadline because he is an executive producer too at the same time. Right. So he has to make sure these movies are done on time. So he's like you know what my ankle's broken, but we have a deadline to release this movie. We're gonna release it by then, you know whether I broke my ankle or not. So I think some actors if they were executive producers they will make leeway. But like, hey, I'm the I'm the movie star and you know I'm the executive producer we're gonna delay this movie right. but for him he's he doesn't think that way he's like well I promise the audience that this movie be released during this time so we're gonna get this done so it's so kind of you Tom so yeah kind. and I think also too that gives Senpai. him I think that gives him leeway to leeway to do his own stunts mm-hmm. like most studios if in even The Rock himself cannot get that kind of leeway honestly cause even though The Rock is, even though The Rock is one of the highest paid actors, he doesn't have the type of credentials as Tom Cruise. The Rock does too much. And he's Rock, delayed to fuck back. I I love The Rock as a person, but I think as a movie star, like his movies aren't good. And people are like, "Oh man, he makes a lot of money." Money. I'm like, "Yeah, but he's in everything." Yeah, he's in everything, and that and him and his movies making a lot of money doesn't make him a great actor. And let's be real, like, he's not a really good actor. Like he doesn't have the act like people people say like he's like the Arnold source of our time, but you gotta understand too, Arnold at least has some acting chops in his movies. Um It aren't would you what movie What movie is The Rock memorable for? Memorable. Hmm. When you say Arnold Schwarzenegger, what's the first movie that comes to Terminator. your mind? Terminator. The Terminator. I don't know. When you say The Rock, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Wrestler. Know. He's still. Yeah, that wrestler. Stigma is still. Yeah, wrestler, but on not him. But not when you when you just ask me that question as a movie star, I I can't think of anything. Some so, people say like Fast and Furious. I'm like, yeah, that's not. Yeah, I don't know. I, I People don't will say Jumanji. That. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. I don't know about that. All I'm saying is he needs to find something that he's memorable for. Yeah, that he can that can set him mm-hmm. like, okay, this is now this is him. Like yeah. this is the rock now. I, mean, I know I'm not trying to knock on his house on everything, but I think like, dude, you don't have to do everything. You I actually, if, I never seen the show, but Ballers, I guess, you know that he could be memorable, memorable for because I've I know a lot of people watch that show and say that's a great show, but I think, you know, with him like with The Rock like taking on so many roles like he wants to show that he's a hard worker and granted i think people already know he's a hard worker like physically too like you know he wakes up mad early to do workouts or whatever but 
is not the same as like doing so many projects and most of his movies aren't that good. I didn't I didn't even see Rampage. And I heard from friends that it was just a mediocre movie. Like, it's just another moneymaker. Um, yeah, I, I don't want him to do that. I want him no. to do something where it's like, wow. Yeah. You, like, wow. That's, that's well, impressive. Well, you know, sh- he's supposed to play uh, Shazam's villain, Black Adam. Like, Well, hopefully uh, I, hopefully that's his... That's his role. Or, that's hopefully, his yeah. separator. Because that I think that's... Uh, I guess that's the same thing for uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Chris Evans didn't really do a bunch of movies, though, the way The Rock has. No, but then he did Chris, that one role. Yeah, yeah, now he's now you know Chris Evans as Captain America. Exactly, that's who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, Fantastic Four didn't even make him popular with the Human Torch because right. that movie was so horrible. People were like, yeah, it still beat Fan Four Stick, but <laughs> so but that like that was his thing, um, and. Tom Tom Cruise. I mean, yeah, I guess you just know him as Ethan Hunt. But then also too, do you can people who know him from Top Gun? Oh, Top know? Gun. But dude, that's so old. I know. Though. Like that's for like older generation, right? You know. Then you're talking about risky business, and then you're talking about like all these classic eighty movies. Like, but I think for the modern generation, definitely Mission Impossible. That's what he's known for, Ethan Hunt. But in either way, just his name by itself, Tom Cruise is like. You don't have some people don't have to watch his movies to know who he is. Right. It's like almost like Michael Jackson when he was alive. Like his name I heard is probably the most popular name compared to Coca Cola, like around the world. Like people you say Michael Jackson, everybody in every language knows who he is. Oh Michael. Yeah. But um I bet Dwayne The Rock Johnson's the same thing right now at this point. You know, The Rock. Like yeah, everyone knows he, who he is. Yeah. I know he wants to go by Dwayne, yeah, but you know, people are gonna remember too, but bu- too late, yeah. but too bad, buddy. You're, but you're the rock. I, guess I still bad. believe a uh, quality over quantity, just in general, in life, like especially with movies. And that's why I like Tom Cruise is because when he comes out with movies, is he doesn't come out with a lot of movies like The Rock, but it's quality movies, or most of them is excluding The Mummy, <laughs> but um. And the Scorpion King, yeah, or Hercules, or oh God, the list I th- goes I think, on and on. I think on. Dwayne was trying to do that with with those movies, like you just said, Hercules. Like try to be like have a movie that he's known for, but those movies were just entertaining, and his acting again was just not good. Um, and I can't criticize because you know acting is hard. I've tried it; it's, it's hard, but. Especially if you're getting paid that kind of money, I would expect, you know, something. I uh, just want him to be remembered for something, yeah. you know, just exactly this one thing. Yeah. I don't want him to be remembered as a guy. Oh, he did everything. It's like, okay, that's cool, I guess. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, there's a lot of actors who've done that and people forget about them like that. So. Oh, he. I don't want him to oversaturate himself. No, he's already oversaturated. I'm sorry. Like I think I've I've talked with a lot of people too. Where I've talked with a lot of friends, where they're like, okay, like I love The Rock, you know, as a person, but like as a movie star, he's it's just annoying to see him in everything. And he's killing the ecosystem with that private jet of his, traveling <laughs> everywhere. The hell's this problem? I don't know, man. It's just. I mean, Leo's happy. He's taking the uh, the attention off him. Yeah. But uh, you know. Cheese, cheese and rice, man. This yeah, guy. man. I think um, action movies these days are really hard to these days because they, you know, like The Rock can make these action movies, but they're very forgettable. Like I didn't see Sky- Skyscraper, but I heard it was entertaining. But that's it. You know, it's forgettable. Well, as soon as I saw, like, oh wait, this is a makeshift Die Hard. Yeah, and he admitted that it was as a much Walmart, as yeah. you know Bruce Willis is a dick and all. I yeah. still was just like, I don't, I don't want to see this movie. No, no there's only one Die Hard for me. That's yeah, it. yeah, and then that's where the difference is between like Tom Cruise and then Dwayne. When Tom makes a movie, people are like, holy shit, like that's crazy what he did, and his movies are actually good for the most part. So that's why, if anything, like people, he'll be remembered more than anything than like someone like Dwayne, where like he's a great person, which is a good trait. But in the end, in this business, it's not about how great a person you are. It's about what kind of work you put out. Is he yeah. executive producer of any of the movies? I don't know. Actually, I'm not really sure. Um, but if he was, then I don't know. He needs to 
choose better projects, honestly, like more quality projects, Qu- projects that challenge him as an actor, not an action star. Like the hop, that new movie they're coming, Hobbs and whatever, the spinoff. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's not a movie that's going to challenge your acting chops. No one cares. No one's going to s- want to watch this movie because of acting. They want to see more cars getting crashed and hot girls in bikinis and thongs and whatever. You know, that's that's what those movies are. It's not about acting chops. So I don't know. Like, I don't think he's challenging. I know this is totally off topic from Mission Impossible, but he's not challenging himself as an actor per se. I think he's established himself already as he can do stuff physically, but not acting wise. Whereas Tom challenges himself all the time physically, obviously, but his acting is always on point, in my opinion. Every movie does. So, again, quality over quantity. <laughs> so. Well, with that being said, thank you, Paul, for joining me on another episode. Yes. And thank you all for watching this episode of Movie Reviews with the Baltimore Guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, you know, to help us grow and we can deliver great content to you. Thank you all for watching. Y'all have a good one. We're out of here. Deuces.